welcome back to Sykes Agritrex episode two with Dr. Yian Evans from uh, Alberta, Edmonton area. It's been a fant uh, fascinating visit with Yian here, and you're going to learn more about what Yian is doing on his amazing uh, four and a half acres of uh, ecosystem here. So it's a fantastic journey so far. Enjoy this episode. Well, these are our, our grafted uh, mountain ash, edible mountain ash, sweet buried mountain ash. Oh, ho, ho. what do you mean edible mountain you, ash? You can make fantastic jam or jelly out of them. Uh, and then there's this, uh, these are apple grafts, cherries, plums, and whatever, eh? And then back in the garden there, there's a lot more grafting again. And, Explain uh, grafting, Jan. Well, grafting is where, where, where you take a, uh, you have a, it's a, it's a good example here now. You grow an apple, and um, you graft a, 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 a good apple onto an old stock. This one is um, uh, a wild pear with a, um, a Russian pear grafted on it. Okay, and, and why would you do that? Well, because this Russian pear is a good pear, the wild pear is useless. But this Russian pear now will produce beautiful pears. And they can stand in all but a winter. So why do you use the old rootstock? Why don't you just use the new Russian pear rootstock? Well, you can't get them to root, you know, you can't okay. get them to grow. And with plums, for example, you um, you graft several plums on a... See, these are all grafts and they eventually go out and I got rows of them. See, these are plum trees and this has got a whole bunch of plums grafted on it. Oh, actually, this... Is it difficult to do? No, it's easy. Once it, it, you know how, well, it's the sort of thing I do in the spring, eh? Mm -hmm. And there's this, these are all grafts down here. The springtime is the best time to do grafting? You can. You can do it in the summer as well with small bud grafting. Sap, sap is moving up in the spring. Yeah, but in the spring you keep the buds. You cut tick bud wood in December, put it in the freezer. And then in April, May, April, usually April, May, you graft. You, you bring your stock in from outside and you graft it. And um, you can see the all grafted trees down there. Hmm. Come down this way then. And I'll show you the... Uh, By the way, this was another white cloth. There was another white cloth over here, and this is very poor soil. And look, you got rutabagas and turnips and cabbage family, clean. Hmm. You keep out the root maggots, and you keep out the butterflies. Mm -hmm. And then these are grafted trees down here again now. You see, there's rows of them down there. Very cool. Keep them in here over winter as well. And then these are figs and things that. Uh, Produce, you know, crops of figs. Figs, yeah. Figs, okay. uh, uh, grapes. Yeah, I'm starting to grow them against the wall. So these are Riesling grapes over here, yes, and then you have the yeah, tomatoes over there. Beans hanging from well, the ceiling. Well, grapes, blackberries, and stuff. Different and, kind uh, of tomatoes. And black kiwis tomatoes. and stuff. What are the black tomatoes from? Like, what are they? Uh, it's a German variety, I think. I mm -hmm. variety the names in that too. Hmm. It's not to be. Is it high in anthocyanin? These ones wouldn't be, wouldn't they? No, it's a. You take all this. This is. Um, Heising Junction. Hmm. Heising Junction Blues, it's called. Whatever, somebody bred the thing and it's huh? just a dark. Um, so you do all kinds of stuff in this greenhouse, eh, hey, Yeah, well, it's. I mean, I mean you could be here uh, 12 months a year. Yeah. You know, you turn the thing on minimum temperature, right? Mm -hmm. And if you keep it above 40, self, uh, 40 uh, Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. just above freezing, mm -hmm. and you come here in the winter. And plants are hardy? And the plant, well, yeah, they, they, the temperature's low, but the thing is in the, in the winter, then you, you get yourself cleaned up, you put everything in order, and get all the crap of the thing there. You grow pea varieties and stuff. That mm -hmm. I, I, I sell the TNT as well, mm -hmm. different kinds of peas. And, um, you you uh, you're fun, mm -hmm. Rob. Mo most most uh, genetic things we have uh, around here are transfines. In other words, Mother Nature did it. You know, nobody in a lab did it. You know, what do you have? Golden delicious apple. Mother Nature did it. Red delicious. Uh, um, it, it's some of the, the pears and the plums that we have. Well, how did it do it? Mother Was Nature. It? Yeah. Accidental crosses, unusual crosses. People found out, checked them. Hey, let's multiply it up. And what happens with the mountain ash there? Probably somebody, likely in Siberia or Russia, found a sweet mountain ash. Huh. So he got propagated and it somehow found its way to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing with breeding technology now, modern breeding technology, to mirror or to uh, basically duplicate what Mother Nature is doing? Well, just speeding the process up. 
We're speeding the process up by doing mass crossings, mass crosses, and checking them out. That's all we're doing. We're speeding the process up, and then we're helping Mother Nature by doing some of the crosses ourselves, because we ourselves have lots of viruses in us and now become part of our system. Mm -hmm. In other words, we are GMO, living examples of GMO. We've got these viruses that do things for us and bacteria that do things for us. They're like GMO things. Uh, exactly, and yet people go, GMO? Uh, they don't even know what it means, actually. You know, but it's, it's all it is, is let's speed up the genetics of the plants and animals uh, that can benefit mankind, especially with this massive world population that so we have. So you've shown me all such things from grafting to breeding technologies here to propagation of lilies to wild uh, 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 free-range chicken feeding. And so how do you feel about modern technology and breeding technology today in the labs that we're doing? It's a good job. It's just speeding it up. All it's doing is is like getting things going faster. You know, better corn varieties, better soybeans. Uh, they're, they're looking for genetic uh, aberrations, and we can grow them, and we can help them, and we can nurture them, and we can double and triple. Yields. What about the accuracy? Let's talk about you're you're, you're a breeder. You've been yeah. breeding everything for your whole life. What 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 do you think about the accuracy today versus when you started your career? Well, the accuracy is getting better, but oftentimes it's damn luck. <laughs> you know, you, you're lucky fine. You find something that's got a color pigment in it, or you find something that's got a, a particular uh, sweet taste in it. Uh, like with apples. Apples are lucky finds, a lot of them. You know, the best apples in Canada, Macintosh is a lucky find. The Evans cherry, a lucky find. In other words, most cherries will produce medium or <laughs> mediocre crops. The Evans cherry produces huge crops. It just outperforms. It's like a it's like a race horse that won the Kentucky Derby by, by 200 lengths, you know? Speaking of apples, Jan, what's your opinion of the Arctic apple where they flicked off the, uh, the enzymes that produce polyphenolic uh, oxidase and they reduce the browning and bruising? Nothing at all. It's a perfectly good thing because there are apples that don't do that and naturally have it, but they're not of, say, baking quality or whatever. I can show you apples. I can go to the orchard now and show you apples. I'll cut some, they'll brown in five minutes. I'll cut some, they won't brown at all. But all they've done is take those genes out that cause browning. I mean, and some apples naturally have it. Well, it would save a lot of waste, wouldn't it? It's, it just saves time. It's, yeah. you know, put it in there. In other words, um, instead of having to... Um, if you're crossing from, if you're going crossing a river from A to B, you build a bridge. You don't walk around to the source of the river and come around the other side. You just save time, put a bridge over it. Right on. And genetics is just a bridge that we get things done.